I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Pop plosives are fun. Even though pl fun is not a plosive. Pa -pa 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 -pa. What is going on? Why is the volume not increasing? There we go. Okay. She sells she shells by the seesaw. I can't say any fucking thing. <laughs> holy shit. What's holy shit? Uh, I was looking up audio interfaces because I was like, well, no, it'd be cheaper. Is it Raspberry Pi or, or this older, like the next model down from my uh, interface and oh boy did inflation hit hard yeah <laughs> yeah i remember it being oh about fifty dollars cheaper wow it's uh that's a thing yeah <laughs> one second i need to do some cleanup work really quick yeah. i don't remember when i got this but the old uh the old scarlet 2i4 it's the older model, you know, whenever he got it, it was the newest one, now it's the oldest one. <laughs> but it's, it's, she's a beast, man. She holds up. It doesn't let me down. There we go. Although Sorry, I, I, I was paying attention. I, I was just focused on moving around some of my files. It's all good. Although I am interested now that I'm just shopping for audio interfaces, I guess. I want to see what the next, le what the next one up is that'll have more more uh inputs because i've been i only have two inputs i want four inputs and oh for the sound the mixer board for yeah for my my sound in my audio interface there yeah it is not bad that's maybe a christmas present to myself <laughs> for yeah type of type of dealio there so i got uh the transformer siege sound wave nice and i am loving this dude hell yeah and the reason I'm loving this dude is the dumbest reason anyone could love a, a sound wave ever. Oh, no. Or maybe it's not. So, it probably um, is. he doesn't transform into a boombox because yeah. Siege is based on Cybertron, uh -huh. like the war on Cybertron. Yeah. Um, he tra transforms into a dropship. Okay. However, he also has a hidden mode where you can transform into light posts from episode one of the <laughs> one, which is great, but That's also fantastic. not the reason why this is my favorite sound wave ever. Yeah. The reason my, this is my favorite sound wave ever, and I don't know if this is going to show up on camera. Let me take the sword out of his hand. So see this hand, how it's yeah. just a fist. Oh yeah. Notice how this hand has a little, a little pointer thing. going. Yeah. On. You know why? So he can, he can do this. No. So he can move his hand to the ejector port. Oh and... no shit! No Ew. shit! And That's honestly, cool. honestly, that when I found out that you could do that with him, I was like, "Well, this is the best sound wave that has ever existed." Yeah, at the twenty dollar price point for uh, for the listeners is his sound wave transformer. He's got his pointer finger out, and he's the guy that pops out a cassette tape, and he can pop open the button to open the cassette player, and his whoop, and his chest flops open. Which I'm not. I I'm gonna. If if this sound wave can do it, I'm gonna eat my words. Yeah. Um. But other than the masterpiece, I don't think any other sound wave has ever done that. Shit! Right on, man. Should and we... I gave my sound, my masterpiece sound wave away. So should we just before we get too deep do the old uh, sinky sinky clapperoo? Yeah, we should probably do that. So three, two, one. I hate you so much. <laughs> where did you get that oh amazon <laughs> so he has a clapboard now that has like you know the whole scene yada 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 thing oh <laughs> uh, that how, so how much did that joke set you back that visual gag that only i will get to see um not not too much uh i don't remember but it, it was uh reasonable it's reasonable to the point where I, when i was shopping for them i went Oh, that seems too low. 
Yeah, I mean, you just can't... So, now what you have to do, because we are in the Hudson Valley, which means there's inexplicably a metric ton of movies that get filmed here. They, I just saw an article come out. They're calling us Hollywood East. Is that really true? Yeah. Huh. So, well, I mean, I think there's a Steve Buscemi film that's filming in... You know what? I'm about to eat my Well, he, he's uh, not quite local, but he, he lives just south of us. Yeah. So I'm going to eat my words on the Soundwave thing. I met him. I, I like how we're having two separate com- com- conversations. Because <laughs> uh, I'm still yeah. fixated on this Soundwave thing. Yeah. It turns out this Soundwave also has a little pointer finger feet. Philly. Oh, no shit. Okay. And I just realized that, and I've owned this for close to a decade. No shit. So, but yeah, no. Uh, also, Steve Buscemi's like a really nice dude from what I've heard. Yeah, no, he's he's dope. He uh, did, well, he, did you did you meet him while you were working on the farm stand? Yes, sir. He's a nice guy. A lot of people, a lot of people go in there, and there's to, to the point where at least at the time when I was there, it was uh, it wasn't a big deal, right? Because you'd expect if you're just working somewhere, someone would be like, "Oh shit, uh, you know, like Craig, uh, you know, is, is Daniel he, Craig, yeah, Daniel Craig." But it just, like, you just be, like, just no one would say anything. It got to the point where just no one would say anything to each other because it was pretty regular. It was like, oh, well, there's all... Steve Buscemi, there's Dan Craig, there's, you know, Vera Farmiga, you know, it's, they just show uh, up. Doesn't, uh, doesn't What's-Her-Name have a, uh, lady who's always in, um, William Quentin Defoe Tarantino has, movies? has a house down the road from where I used to work. Yeah. What's-Her-Name? What's the name of that lady that's that that Quentin Tarantino loves? Uh, she's in Pulp Fiction. Oh, she's in Uma Thurman. Yeah. Thank you, Lissa. Yeah, no, she, she lives in the area. She's close, yeah. Um. Also, I think Amanda Seyfried has appearances in the area too. She's a nice lady. Lissa says she's a very nice. <laughs> she's a nice lady. Yeah, she has a cat, right? A dog named Finn. A dog named Finn. A dog named Finn. So this has been Cryptopedia's Celebrity Watch. They're a different kind of cryptid. Yeah, they're a different kind. They're not really cryptids around here, though. They're just, they're extant. Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of, but but that being said, you just, here's here's my sage advice for any time you encounter a uh, celebrity in the wild. Yeah. Don't acknowledge it. Yeah. Th- th- well, they're just, just chill. Just, they're just chill. Yeah. Like if it's like, hey, what's up? Like I gave them like I gave them like secrets if I didn't had seen them before of like local areas here. Like they'd be buying something, and I'd be like, yo, if you like this, just down the road over here, it's what's up. And then they'd show up and be like, dude, that was the shit. I was like, yeah, that is the shit. That's why I told you about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, yeah. Like my sister babysits Michael O'Keefe's kid, the guy from um, uh, Caddyshack. Oh yeah yeah. 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 They're just, uh, yeah. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Why did I minimize? Sorry, I didn't mean to yell, microphone. I'm so sorry. I'm going to have to automate that later. Future Brandon, I'm sorry for yelling. I minimized oh. a window I didn't want to minimize. Well, that's what happens. It... Why do we have two copies of the Black Shuck in our broadcasted folder? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to delete them. Go for it. Um... So maybe we should start because we we're at recording minute uh, eight twenty four. I assume two minutes are going to be cut at the beginning because some wild stuff happened in there. Not really, um, <laughs> but I think people really like the sound of input jacks being fiddled. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think they do too. And you know me futzing around with the transformer. Yeah, but uh, actually, that is something that does seem to be a little popular. <laughs> um yeah so uh yeah so what do, do you want me to do an intro is that is I that think, i think, implying I think you want us to, to start intro. should we start recording I I the, start. the podcast okay i think i think i think i want to know about a new cryptid all right so welcome 
to Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we, you will take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and the thing that definitely lives under your bed. I said something weird in the middle because I was listening to Skeptic's Guide, and I almost called us rogues, because that's how they introduce themselves. So I'm... Rogues? Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 it's the, the rogues gallery. So I'm... Uh, uh, okay. I'm Brandon. I'm John... And uh, I think we are kind of rogues. We're kind of rogues. I mean, I mean, roguish, roguelite, maybe even. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> although, you know, we still haven't gotten any. Uh, I, I, we still haven't gotten any like avoid this podcast letters written, and actually, we've somehow avoided any form of hate mail. That that's impressive. I'm pretty sure. I, let me let me just check our our Gmail. Yeah, go go check the email. Mm, It'll just let's be... see. It's mostly notifications from Twitter. Is it? Yeah. Well, we we usually use oh, Twitter. Twitter, people, and so. then there's some pod thing that I get like updates from. Yeah. They're like, here's the thing, and I'm like, oh, yeah, no. cool. Oh wait, maybe I should check the trash. No, we don't get any spam either. No. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, but. The the caveat to that is we get no emails from anyone. So, are we CryptopediaCast or Cryptopedia at gmail dot com? Uh, CryptopediaCast at gmail dot com. Uh huh. No, you're you're sending an email to it. Okay. Well, Brandon's gonna be the first bit of hate mail, I assume. <laughs> uh so uh oh yeah cryptids and the such uh (laughs) yeah i I mean we have we do do a podcast about this even if the first 10 minutes indicates nothing about that yeah i mean that's that's tradition for unprofessional podcasts i feel like (laughs) uh this week's creature can be found in text as far back as the 1600s it is humanoid in appearance it lives in ireland and it may still be seen today do you have any guesses as to what it may be? Mm, leprechaun? Yup! It's the leprechaun, man. Okay. All right. All right. The little people. Let's see. This is yeah. releasing the 8th. Uh, I think we missed St. Patrick's Day by a, uh, a wide margin. I wrote this on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but we didn't oh. we didn't leverage that sweet sweet uh, SEO for leprechauns. I didn't think that far ahead. We can wait till the uh, St. Patrick's Day start cranking it out the folklore Thursday beforehand. Okay, be so good. what we'll do is what we'll do is we won't uh, we won't release this podcast until next year. That sounds good to me. Yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> Lepre- so, yes. So tell me about like like so other than being a slight kind of racist uh thing like in the form of the fighting irish what do we got about uh what do you got about re- leprechauns also did you put that in the thing i just stuck it in there oh yeah well i feel gross so mm-hmm. thanks for that it's titled leprechaun leprechauns are a type of fair or east she spelled aoc so that that's a confusing pronunciation That may be found in Ireland. They typically resemble a small bearded man wearing a hat and a coat. Typically, uh, they're seen on their own. It is said that they like to spend their time mending shoes. And they have a pot of gold that is usually found at the end of a rainbow. It is said that... Yeah? uh, Sorry, sorry. You might might cover it. Let me me just see. Okay. Uh, It is said that you can catch one, and if you do, it can grant you three wishes as a reward for setting them free. Okay, so there's two things that are missing. One, they love to rap. That, oh boy, if you scroll to the very last page. (laughs) Yeah. Also, number two, uh, they they live in one other place. They live in one other place? Yes, I sent you a link. Uh Uh-oh. Will I hate this? Yes. Is the question. Oh, it's a link to a PlayStation ad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh yes, yes. Let's see. What is this? What are you doing? What does he look like I'm doing? I told you last week I had a plan, Shannon. What is it? This is horrible though. I'm watching it. 
this right here is a 100% genuine leprechaun trap. <laughs> So he's we've got two wrestlers, right? Yep. And he built a genuine leprechaun trap, which is a stick in a box, and he sprinkled mm -hmm. a trail of lucky charms to yeah. go under the box. Yeah. And he's got it's a rope. to capture the hornswoggle. It's to capture the hornswoggle. Did you do this when you were in elementary school on uh, St. Patrick's yes. Day? We'd set leprechaun traps, so like everyone would yeah. go home, build a leprechaun trap, and then he'd be like, mm -hmm. "Oh shit, the fucking leprechaun!" Right? Because they'd put. They'd sprinkle yeah. green glitter everywhere and put like baby feet covered in paint, just make footprints and shit walk around. Didn't yeah, you? I mean we never oh. we never caught them. I'll still I still set the trap every year. One of these days. They're slide. They'd leave uh, chocolate coins. Oh, that's not great. I just skipped forward more into the video. They have a little oh. person dressed as a leprechaun going ham on the Lucky Charms. Yeah, it's the Hornswoggle. What the fuck? Okay, I guess the, that's you, a thing. You never heard of the Hornswoggle? Holy cow! Okay. So the Hornswoggle is a character from the WWE played by let me let me see if I can Oh pull up. no. Uh You know, I probably this this joke is maybe going nowhere, but um his name is Dylan Mark Postal. Uh, -huh. uh his ring name is the Hornswoggle. And he also worked in Impact Wrestling under the ring name Swoggle. What? <laughs> All right. So this backstory is wild. He debuted in WWE <laughs> 2006, allied with Finlay. Hornswoggle yeah. won the Cruiserweight Championship in his first stint and was er erroneously revealed as Vince McMahon's storyline illegitimate son. It was exposed no. to the anonymous Raw general manager who had controlled the Raw brand from June 21st, 2010 to 2011. So, what? Yeah, he basically lives underneath the ring. Holy cow. Um, he also was the Leprechaun in Leprechaun's Origins. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's been more than enough, and if we don't cut that down, I will be severely disappointed. <laughs> uh for a three-second joke. Uh, the word itself could be derived from the Irish, Irish word leprechaun, defined by Irish historian and le lexicographer Patrick Deneen as a pygmy, a sprite, or a leprechaun. Wait, did they just define a word using the word inside of it? Yeah, but they're spelled different. Okay, sure. <laughs> Whatever. The word is thought to be a corruption of the Middle Irish uh, lutricon, uh, which sounds like a luchador leprechaun, lut <sighs> lutrapon. The hornswoggle. The hornswoggle. Oh, we're connecting all the dots. Oh, this is what everyone sense. comes here for. Uh, yeah. From the Old Irish lucrapan, and is a compound of the roots lu, which means small, and corp, which means body. Mm. The alternative spelling... Leith... Right, okay, let's see if you get that. Let's let's uh, go for it. Life Bragan stands. Life uh, Bragan stems. There ends with an M. Life Bragan stems. No, that I I'm pretty. Oh, sure Life Bragan. You... I just forgot to put a space yeah. in there. Life Bragan. Look yep. at that. I'm a professional. Ste <laughs> I just forgot to put a space in there. Stems from a, a folk etymology uh, deriving from the word lathe, meaning half, and brogue, uh, which means brog, which is a type of shoe. Um, and because of the frequent portrayal of the leprechaun as working on a single shoe. So they're kind of like little uh, shoe fixers. The cobblers. The cobblers. The cobbling. Not to be mistaken the with that... Uh... Adam Sandler movie, The yes. Cobbler. Yes. Where he transformed into the person whose shoes he put on. Yeah. The the masterpiece, the, 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 the perfect work that is The Cobbler. Yeah, how is that not a blockbuster? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Alternative spellings in English have included lubrican. Which... Okay, I don't believe that for a second. L uh, no, I put it in italics. Lubrican. Yeah, okay. Leprechaun I mean... and leprechaun. The Most of these are just lazy. Yeah, yeah. They're all very I similar. I don't want to have that hard sound in there. How yeah. can I avoid it? <laughs> The first instance of the word in the English language was from Thomas Decker's comedy, 
The Honest Whore, Part 2, written in 1604. Hey, I'd rather have an honest whore than anything else. <laughs> oh, man. That, I'm putting that on your gravestone. <laughs> At least she's honest. At least she's honest. Uh, and, and the excerpt from that play reads as, As for your Irish lubricant, that spirit whom the preposterous charms thy lust hath raised in a wrong circle. I'm not entirely mm. sure what that means, but that's the first time it shows up. So, based on what I'm reading, uh, it looks like the person... I, I don't have the context for this, but it looks like the person was lustful in some way, and that brought the leprechaun brought the leprechaun to it so maybe it's implying that they're attracted to like uh impure thoughts oh maybe yeah they're them horny boys i mean the horn swoggle it's i I gotta keep going back to it (laughs) yeah which to be fair that dude he's kind of working a dream job for some people like being a professional i just saw him eat cereal and get trapped in a box He's a professional wrestler. I mean, for a lot of people, that is a dream job, but I don't yeah. think that... Right, when you're picturing that, you're picturing, like, Booker T or, like, Stone Cold or any of those guys back from the day. Why not? Did you do this? I don't know if you did this. Did You, you didn't go to my elementary school. You 100% did not. No. You, you went elsewhere. We had a sand pit on a hill out back, mm-hmm. and what everyone would do is we'd, you'd, you'd go to Target, you'd get your parents to buy you an action figure of a wrestler. And there were good, there were lots of articulation, lots of points of articulation. And mm-hmm. um, because other people didn't have them, you'd bring just all the ones you had. And then we'd have wrestling matches with the action figures and the sand pit out back. And then kids start, they'd buy like the ring and all that stuff. You'd be like, holy shit. But it was, it was great because it was fair because the play involved, you'd bring the packaging with you because the back of the box had all their stats, sort of like how Transformers does that. Oh, God. So we'd actually wrestle with the action figures accurate to the stats on the back of the box. <sighs> you know what I did with my wrestling action figures? What'd you I do? I played by myself. Oh! I, I, I was never very big on playing with other people with my toys. That, that was probably better for the toy in the long run, though, right? Because then we had, like, sand yeah. in the joints, and it was, like, upbraiding everything, and they didn't hold up for super long. But uh, I had one that you poured sweat into. What? Sweat. What? I had a sweating wrestling action figure. That's fantastic. It was pretty great. I think I had Stone Cold. Oh, man. That's so this ridiculous. Has been, so this episode is definitely going to be called something like... Uh, the Hornswoggle or WWE or something like that. Yeah, Hornswoggle because at this raw. rate, yeah, at this point, at this point, we've we've talked about wrestling more than leprechauns. Yeah, now I'm looking up the wrestling figures. <laughs> this is it. I found it. Oh, this is shit. the Rock. Uh, I'm gonna pop this right right into the copy because this is the perfect moment for it oh no okay so patrons holy shit okay <laughs> that... i didn't have that one but i oh wait wait this is a better one this is a better one i'm gonna delete that one okay this is so better this is so much better oh man what the fuck <laughs> it's great because because it's i haven't seen these before there it's a caricature of stone cold with yep. like a sledgehammer and a bottle of sweat Mm-hmm. Holy crap. Okay. Yeah, the 90s were great. They were fantastic. <laughs> uh, if you want one, mint on card, guess how much it costs. Oh, shit. Okay. These are out of production, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. But they probably weren't super popular back in the day. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to say 50 bucks. You'd be wrong. How wrong am I? $15 plus shipping. That's including oh, shipping. 50 plus shipping? 15 including oh, shipping. 15 oh yeah. that seems about right yeah like if you to buy one price. new i can picture that being the cost back in the day 15 to Pretty 20 much. bucks yeah wow there's a lot of podcasts still left that and we're just talking about wrestling yeah <laughs> the release, listen yeah 
listen, I'm I've been in like this fugue these past few days because of all the shit that's been going on. So <laughs> oh. me focusing is a rare rare occurrence. Yeah. The earliest reference to the leprechaun appears in the medieval tale known as Ectra Fergus Mac Letty, which translates to Adventure of Fergus, Son of Letty. Okay. Mm -hmm. The text contains an episode in which the King of Ulster falls asleep on the beach and wakes to find himself being dragged into the sea by three leprechauns. Why? <laughs> I don't... Why? I, only, I didn't read the beginning part of the play. It's, it's like the should. show notes, the original uh, translation uh, and the original uh, Irish language version. <laughs> I just read the part with the leprechauns. He captures his abductors, who then grant him three wishes in exchange for release. Hmm. So they're uh, genies now. Yeah, they're genies. Uh, translated to English, uh, it would read, There they fell asleep on the seacoast. Sprites came to the king and bore him out of his chariot, having first deprived him of his sword. Clever. Very clever. Take the sword Key. before the kidnapping. That's what I Remember always Remember that, say. people. Remember it, that. It's important. Mm -hmm. They then carried him as far as the sea, and when his feet touched the sea, he became aware of it. So he's just a deep, deep sleeper. He'd be dragged out of a chariot. And yeah, not wake but up. if he gets wet, it's over. There's, he's he's not a gremlin. <laughs> well, then 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 there were three kings of Ulster that there, a second king of Ulster appeared because he got wet. Yeah, and then they fed him after midnight, which is such a nebulous time frame. <laughs> think that between that means before noon but after 12 that doesn't make sense i don't know uh at this point he woke and caught hold of the three of them one in each hand and on his breast uh he wrote what wait one each hand and one on his breasts sorry i read that wrong so he's got so one in his hand and he's got holding the other one against his chest okay cuz like i'm imagining i'm imagining a man taking his pectoral muscles yeah. and just clenching a dwarf no. <laughs> in his pecs. Like, uh -huh. what are you doing? <laughs> life for life, said the chief dwarf. Let my three wishes be granted to me, says Fergus. Thou shalt have anything that is not beyond our power, said the dwarf. So Fergus chose to ask him for a charm for passing under seas and pools and lakes. Uh, Thou shalt have it, said the dwarf. Save one that I bar thee, thou shalt not go under Loch Rugridge, Rug Rug uh, which is thy own territory. Then the sprites gave him herb uh, to put in his ears. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that is a direct reference to. And uh, he used to travel about with them under seas. Okay, I guess that maybe to keep he's your just, ears from popping under pressure. He's just got earplugs. He's just got, ear plugs. He's he's got, got ear to avoid. You got to watch out for swimmers' ears, man. You gotta watch out for swimmer ears. <laughs> you have to take care of your ears. It's, uh -huh. it's very. Listen, as someone who's had tinnitus for a very long time, take care of them ears. The more you know. The more you know. This has been the Cryptopedia PSA service. Wow, I almost said PSA service announcement, <laughs> which is nonsense. Uh huh. Continue, because uh -huh. I'm just sad with myself. As you should be. The leprechaun is said to be a solitary creature whose principal occupation is the making and mending of shoes and who enjoys playing practical jokes. According to William but your Butler Yeats, uh, Yeet. Who, Yeet, whose name may sound familiar to listeners as we used him as a source in episode 5 for fairies, Yeats uh, wrote okay. that uh, the leprechaun makes shoes continually and has grown very rich. Many treasure crocs uh, buried of old in wartime, uh, has he now for his own. In the early part of the century, according to Crocker, in a newspaper office in Tipperary, they used to show a little shoe forgotten by a leprechaun. Wait, what? Uh, so, so, apparently they mend shoes, but there were wars back in the day, so the treasure, the pot of gold, is really derived from these old buried chests of money from older wars. Back in the uh, day, okay, and that okay, there was a um, uh, a newspaper office that had supposedly the shoe of a leprechaun that they put on display. 
Okay. According to David Russell McNally, the leprechaun was neither good nor evil. Midway, Mm. however, between the good and the evil beings of all mythologies, there's often one of those qualities who have... They're they're mixed. They're mixed quality, basically, good and evil. Not wholly good nor wholly evil, but balanced between the two. Sometimes doing a generous action, then descending to a petty meanness, uh, but never rising to nobility of character, nor sinking to the depths of depravity, good from whim and mischie- mischievous from caprice. Capitalist? I'd say they're I'd say they're lawful e- uh, lawful neutral. Lawful no- neutral. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say true. Ne- well, would the pranks put difficult. them as chaotic neutral? It might, but they also ha- so they might be true neutral because because they do have to abide by certain laws. That's true. Okay. Right? So yeah. they they do abide by laws but they perform pranks. So yeah. they probably they probably are true neutral. Huh. On the on the D&D uh alignment chart. Yeah. If I'd have to put them anywhere. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right? Like that makes sense. That that tracks. No, that makes total sense. So oh, wait. far. One second. One second. Oh no. Okay. I gotta go. I, oh, wait, no. I, I can look it up online. Continue. I'm okay. Gonna figure this. I'm going to figure out definitively what leprechauns are on the alignment scale. <laughs> Such a being is the leprechaun of Ireland, a relic of the pagan mythology of that country. By birth, the leprechaun is of low descent, his father being an evil spirit and his mother being a degenerate fairy. By nature, he is a mischief maker, the puck of the Emerald Isle. Wait, 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 wait. All leprechauns are... What? All leprechauns have a father that is an evil spirit, and their mother is a degenerate fairy. They're mischief makers, and they're the puck of the Emerald Isle. (laughs) So I'm imagining uh, the prostitute from... uh... I guess sex worker would be the better way of putting that mm-hmm. from uh, from The Simpsons. Okay, <laughs> you know the one I'm thinking of, the like, yeah, the, like pack a day, arr, yeah, type. That's what I'm imagining a degenerate fairy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not far off. I I don't think so. All right, no. he is of diminutive size, about three feet high, and is dressed in a little red jacket or roundabout with red breeches buckled at the knee, gray or black stockings, and a hat cocked in the style of a century ago, over a little old, withered face. Round his neck... So, yeah. real quick, yes. uh, I looked up the Pathfinder alignment for leprechauns. Okay. And it's chaotic neutral. Okay, okay. Um, But I still think, because they have to abide by certain laws, they're a better candidate for true neutral. And okay. If it was in my campaign, they'd, they'd be, be true, true neutral. neutral. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Around his neck is an Elizabethan scarf. Uh, sorry, an Elizabethan ruff and Same frills thing. of lace at his wrists. On the he's wild, he's a fancy boy. He's a fancy boy. On the wild west coast, where the Atlantic brings almost certain rains, he dispenses with ruff and frills and wears a frieze overcoat over a pretty red suit. So that unless uh, on the lookout for a crocked hat, um, ye might pass a leprechaun on the road and never know it is himself that's in it at all. So then they're not... Wait, but... Okay. So here's what would happen if I pass by a dude in that time period who was three feet tall. What the fuck? <laughs> Because that's that's uh, what I found most interesting about this so far is that the leprechaun dresses almost completely in red, not green. Which, when you picture leprechauns nowadays, it's they're all fully decked out in all green. This description says that they're all in red and that they have like that the ruffle neck collar and they've got like lace yeah. coming out their sleeves and all that. So it's very different from what the original uh, iteration of the leprechaun was. Well, not even original. It's the iteration that's modern. Yeah. The uh, the fun thing about this uh-huh. uh, is I'm imagining the guy, the villain from Pocahontas, who na- whose name I can't oh, remember. Oh, I know who you're talking about. 
Um, what is the name of that character? I'm imagining not John Smith. John Smith is the is the fr- the the good guy. Yeah. Although in real life, less good guy. G- Governor Ratcliffe. There we go. Oh, That's okay. the name of him. Yeah. I'm imagining Governor L- Ratcliffe, which now that I'm looking at a picture of him, mm-hmm. wholly inaccurate. <laughs> Not at all. He doesn't look at all like that. <laughs> so never mind. This is a dead yeah. this is a dead uh path of thinking. Yeah, I remember him being ripped. <laughs> He oh. was not ripped. No? Was, no. I might be thinking Remember, of a different guy. You might be thinking of John Smith. John Smith is ripped. Oh shit, I might be thinking of John Smith. Why are we talking Smith. about why are we talking about uh uh fictional characters in vis-a-vis their rippedness? <laughs> Who knows? The favorite amusement of the leprechaun is riding a sheep or a goat or even a dog when the other animals are not available. Uh, aside from riding sheep and dogs until almost death. Wow, the lep- they're good. <laughs> the leprechaun is credited with much small mischief about the house. Sometimes he'll make the pot boil over and put out the fire. Then again, he'll make it impossible for the pot to boil at all. He will. So he's breaking the laws of thermodynamics. Got it. <laughs> exactly. That's their magical powers. They break if thermodynamics. <laughs> if they're breaking the laws of thermodynamics, we need to harness leprechaun. Harness the leprechaun technology. That's we need to harness say. it. <laughs> we need that technology. Do you know how many problems could be solved if we broke through the barrier that the laws of thermodynamics hold? At least two. At least. <laughs> he will steal the bacon flitch or empty the potato kish or fling the baby down onto the floor. So, what? Uh, uh, Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> Okay, so those first two, all right, maybe my, that's not the worst. One of these things is not like the other. Yeah, or so it's escalation. He he yeah. could also throw furniture around the room with strength and vigor, altogether disproportionate to his diminutive size. Well, knowing knowing what I know about leprechauns uh-huh. and the documentaries I've seen in the form of the leprechaun. Uh-huh. I am not surprised about their ability to to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz they are strong. They're very strong. Chimpanzee strength. Yeah. Yeah. His mischievous pranks seldom go farther than to drink up all the milk or despoil the proprietor's bottle of his poteen. I would say that throwing a baby is uh worse. Worse, but okay. Worse. Sometimes in sportiveness filling the bottle with water, or when very angry, leading the fire up to the thatch and then starting the inmates of the cabin uh, with his laugh as they arise, frightened to put up... Okay, he'll also light your house on fire. He'll okay. throw a baby and light your house on fire. There's This is weird because it's so... Um, it's so, like, all over the place what this thing does. Yeah, like, they're like... It's it, like... It hardly goes worse than... Spilling your milk and lighting your house on fire. Like, whoa, hold on. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. It, it does what? Oh, yeah, it'll also kill your baby. <laughs> but the milk, the milk is the real problem. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay, random dude in Ireland in the, what is it, 1600s? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's there. Their priorities are all kind of weird. Hey, you need that milk. You listen. You, you can need just that have, milk. You, need you can it. just have another kid. <laughs> they might not have even been named yet. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I shared this with you <clears throat> late last night, but I was reading a high fantasy novel, and oh, there was God. a sexy time scene, and it had the funniest thing ever they said (laughs) there's a whole scene i'm gonna avoid it because there's some weirdness with on the narrator's weird it's weird (laughs) and he couldn't even keep his milk in the bucket (laughs) maybe that's what they're talking about oh maybe he'll steal your milk oh god (laughs) so now that now we've got incubi yeah now he's an incubus 
or she is a succubus. He or she, you could have male and female leprechauns. Yeah. The uh, lubricons, the leprechauns, the everything is spelled almost the same cons. The looping cons. The looping cons. They're uh, they're wolves that are wearing con hats. Oh God. They're Mongols. Mm -hmm. They're a very respected tribe of Mongols. Is it bad that my first thought went to Lupin the Third instead of werewolves? No. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not because I I literally thought the same thing when I did it. <laughs> Novelist Samuel Lover, uh, writing in 1831, describes the leprechaun as quite a beaut in his dress, notwithstanding, for he wears a red square cut coat richly laced with gold and an expensable of the same crocked or sorry cocked hat, shoes and buckles. He's a fancy lad. They're fancy lads. I'm telling you, man. Uh, they're they're the fancy lads of Cornwall. Yeah. I don't know why Cornwall factors into this at all, but it does. It definitely does. Another interesting item of note is that leprechauns uh, differed from region to region in both attire and mannerism. The Yeah, some of them murdered children. Yeah. The uh, the Lawfrey man in Tipperary, he is the Lurigadwine. In Kerry, he is the Lurikon in... Monaghan, he is the Chloricon. Uh, the dress also varies. The Laffrey man wears the uniform of British infantry regiments, a red coat with white breeches, but instead of a cap, he wears a broad-brimmed, high-pointed hat. All right. Uh, and after doing, after doing some trick more than usually mischievous, his favorite position is to poise himself on the extreme point of his hat, standing at the top of a wall or on a house with his feet in there. So he just handstands on his hat in high places. Why? And then he, That's not good for your hat, man. He laughs heartily and then disappears. The, All right. Uh, L the Lorgadon wears an antique slashed uh, jacket of red with peaks all around his jockey cap. So he's got a jockey cap this time. And he's got a sword, uh, which he uses as a magic wand, which one? Badass. So he's a hex blade. He's a hex blade, a storm sword, which is pretty dope. The, uh, Although usually yeah. hex blades are not as good as as pure swordsmen or pure magicians. Yeah. yeah. What about the uh, a spell sword? Same thing. A hex blade and a spell sword are roughly the same. Are they that similar? Just, I mean, usually uh, you won't have both in a fantasy realm. You'll either have a hex blade or a spell sword. Gotcha. Okay. Because because the idea is you're a swordsman who augments their abilities using magic. Um, yeah. But usually what that means is you're limiting yourself to combat magic, stuff you can cast in range of other people. Yeah. Um, and you're limiting your ability to use your weapons because you have to train your magic. So you're, yeah. you're spending less time training your magic. Well, I think so, I had a, a for a short stint a character that was a, a spell sword. But they were. I changed that pretty quickly because it, it turns out you, you're basically getting the worst part of both classes. <laughs> yeah, you, you think you're not, but you are. Yeah, like you're thinking, oh man, I can co totally cover my weaknesses of the swordsman using a uh, the spells, and I can cover the weaknesses of the uh, of the the magic caster by using the sword. But really, what it means is I'm mediocre at both. Exactly. Yeah, because it, it's essentially <coughs> at any given level you can choose spells and attacks that are available to you from like <laughs> half of your current level so if you had picked one you'd be twice as good <laughs> yes yeah that's uh, that's the main problem that's why yeah. multiclassing kind of sucks in D and yeah. pathfinder because you're just really you're just limiting yourself i mean versions of D and d have made multiclassing more and less necessary but mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, they started baking in classes that were essentially a multi-class character, but without the drawbacks of playing a multi-class character, which is yeah. nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of personally am not a huge fan of multi-classing because yeah. I feel like it muddies the storyline. Although, to be fair, you can multi-class if it makes sense in terms of story. Yeah. Like, so for example, like, didn't Bombarded, they started off, they were like level three in their class, and then oh, they yeah. started becoming bards. 
they were yeah they all started as bards because bombarded D &D yeah. podcast everyone plays a bard but they also play the music but then later on i think they also got to choose a second class where you could be like i'm a bard but i'm also kind of strong i think they started with the second class because like their backstory was that they were doing that for a little while but what they yeah. really wanted to do was music yeah so it in context like that, man, this is nothing related. To that at all. <laughs> can you tell? Oh. Can you tell that I have a degree in game design, and we both <laughs> enjoy playing, uh, playing uh, role playing games? Yeah. <laughs> huh. Weird. The Lorecon <laughs> <laughs> is a fit. Percy little fellow whose jolly round face reveal uh, rivals and redness the cutaway jacket he wears that always has seven rows of seven buttons in each row. That's excessive. Too many buttons, I would argue. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Though what use they, they are has never been determined. So even back in the day, they were like, why would you have this many buttons? I mean, even back in the day, they would especially be like, wait, why? Yeah. I mean, the Amish don't have any. Yeah. Uh, since his jacket is never buttoned, nor indeed can it be. So he has all the buttons, but they're of no use. Is that because he's too fat to button it? I like, don't he's know. Wearing, like, I'm because it says he's a fat, pursy little fellow. So yeah. I'm, imagining, I'm imagining that he has a, he's like kind of like Chris Farley when he would wear like shirts that were too small. Yeah. You know, like one of those types of situations. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm I'm imagining him as Chris Farley now. So, not wrong deal with that. Yeah, when in full dress, he wears a helmet several sizes too large for him. But in general, prudently discards this article of headgear as having the tendency to render him conspicuous in a country where helmets are obsolete. And wraps his head in a handkerchief that he ties over his ears. All right, so I guess he's got to hide them elf ears. Got to hide them elf ears. Help. Yeah. The uh the Chloricon of Monogan is a little dandy, being gorgeously arrayed in a swallow tailed evening coat of red with a green vest. So boom, first time we hear of green. Uh, yeah. white breeches. Although it's a it's a vest though, so it's not Yeah. It's not the central theme of the it's a it's an accoutrement. Uh-huh. And uh Accent. his shoes uh that Fur the shine of um, oud shame a looking glass. So without all the apostrophes, I imagine so it I'm... says, uh, for, my guess is for the shine, have them shame a looking glass. So super so shiny. Meaning, yeah, they're so shiny that you can see stuff in them. Yeah, yeah. His head uh, is a long cone without a brim. So boom, we've got our, our leprechaun style hat nail. And is usually uh, set jauntily. On one side of his head. Uh, when mm. greatly provoked, he will sometimes take vengeance by suddenly ducking and poking the sharp point of his hat into the eye of an offender. Oh, wow. So, such conduct is, however, exceptional, as he commonly contents himself with soundly abusing those at whom he has taken offense. The object of the anger, uh, hearing his voice but seeing nothing of this person. So usually he's a ghost voice until he stabs you in the eye. Imagine making a leprechaun so mad that he would stab you in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, impressive. What did you do to that leprechaun? What yeah. did you do to him? <laughs> did you make fun of the Hornswoggle in his presence? He also likes to make himself drunk in gentlemen's cellars. Some suppose he's merely a leprechaun on a spree. He is also unknown in the Connaught and the North. Uh, so he also just gets hammered. Um, the far, f the far derig, uh, which means red man, uh, for he wears a red cap and coat, busies himself with practical joking, especially with gruesome joking. Uh, this he does and nothing else. Yeah, um, I was literally about to say what you're about to say. Yeah, I, I believe this is approaching a red cap. Th this seems yeah. like just a different version of a red cap. I'm not going to go a lot into that. That yeah. Uh, story. Yeah, that's that's pretty much a red cap. Yeah, the uh, the fear Gorta or man of hunger is an emaciated phantom that goes through land of famine, begging an alms and bringing good luck to the giver. 
And among the most interesting is the Chloricon. So we touched on this guy oh. earlier, the Chloricon, but there's some more story about him. So what's this case so, about? Uh, the Fear Gorta. I oh. read a SCP recently mm-hmm. um, that kind of is like that, but it was set in ancient Greece. So oh, okay. basically the idea was a guy came up to this person. He begged for food or money or something. Yeah. Uh, when they didn't give the money, he cursed them, and they basically ended up in purgatory for eternity. No shit. So, it was pretty cool. Cool. Vague Gloves is back. For those of you who are unaware, our sponsor this week, Vague Gloves, makes durable nitrile gloves with smart grip technology. Each glove has different fingerprints, and they are donated by members of the lesser housed community. There was a temporary hold on production due to a sudden loss of donors, partially caused by the sudden influx of sales from our listeners. Fortunately, their new facility in Detroit is back and in full production. As a thank you, Vague Gloves would like to extend a 20% discount to anyone using offer code BIGFOOT at checkout. Now back to the show. Hey, who's that? Uh, this is Jetfire. Nice. It's um, this is the evergreen version of him that they're selling at Walgreens right now. Okay. Um, he's roughly Voyager scale. Okay. But he has the articulation of a commander class. Sweet. Which is the smallest class. Not my favorite. The thing that his articulation so low but yeah. he's also fifteen dollars as opposed to <laughs> seventy dollars so fair fair as a representation of jetfire in my collection he's not terrible nice <laughs> although the new siege jetfire has me salivating a little bit so oh man so <laughs> but i'm losing my mind over siege let's just leave it at that <laughs> So what, let's, uh, oh boy, it's getting real difficult for me to not make jokes about the horn swoggle. The horn swoggle? Ad, yeah. Just ad nauseum. <laughs> like, I got nothing but horn swoggle bits. Uh, um, so a little bit more on the Chloricon. Okay. Um, it's a small fairy with a love of drinking and uh, a love of mischief. Considered to be distinctly separate from the leprechaun. Some believe it just to be a drunk leprechaun. This we touched on before. I'm just sort of re re reiterate, bring us back it's, to the to the it's point. It's just a drunk leprechaun. Yeah, the uh, the two are sometimes used interchangeably. Uh, the leprechaun is more commonly substituted for the chloricon because it's more widely known. Okay. Uh, one folk story written by Thomas Crofton Crocker, which such a good name. Yeah, I mean, it's it's got a lot of alliteration. There's oh, that. yeah. Uh, in 1825, is of the affluent McCarthy family who had a big old house with lots mm-hmm. of food and a big old cellar filled with many casks of wine. Uh, well, that's not going to be good for the... That's not going to be good for the leprechaun's liver. Nuh-uh. Or rather, the chloricon. Yeah, see, you can use them interchangeably. I mean, you can, but you can also use anything interchangeably. Yeah. Whether it makes sense is an entirely different thing. You can use an <laughs> Autobot and Decepticon interchangeably, but they're two separate entities. <laughs> oh, and a Nintendo man. is not a video game. Oh, system. yeah, I'm happy. I think that they're, they've they finally broken out of that. Finally. Well, Nintendo really worked hard to avoid that because uh, if that turned into a, like, what's the word? Um, like for, like... Generic copyright or yeah. whatever... Uh, like how Band-Aid is. Yeah. That would have been actually really detrimental to their existence because then they couldn't trademark things in the same way. Yeah. Yeah. So they they fought hard to prevent that from being a thing. <laughs> it was a thing for a little while. It was. Uh, there are many, no doubt, who will think that the butler would have little to complain in such a house. The whole country would agree with them. If a man could be found to remain as McCarthy's butler for any length of time... So goes well, the story. The problem is 
the leprechauns in air quotes, uh-huh. they drank way too much of the wine and became uh, unbearable to work with. <laughs> they all had really good ideas for business startups that they had to tell you about. Listen, 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 listen. We make a website. What the fuck is a website? <laughs> it's a web, a spider's web. Yeah. We put ads in it. We put oh, ads in the yeah. spider's web, right? Mm-hmm. And then we sell the ad space. But yeah. you see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Every square uh, centimeter of the spider's web, yeah. it's a dollar. Oh, the spider's man. web is a meter. Think about that. Think about that. What's what's a hundred times a hundred? I'm I legitimately don't know right now. I'm drunk. There's so did you hear you? Do you know about the million dollar website? That's what I was making a joke about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, for the listeners, a guy made a website just for ads that was a million pixels, and each pixel was a dollar, <laughs> and you could advertise. I think it was. I think it was a uh, million dollar homepage. It was. Yeah. It is actually still a, around. Like you can still is it? look at it. Yeah. Holy cow! Shoot. Yeah. Wow, it is ugly. My favorite is the date tonight. Oh. On here. <laughs> Uh, so those who were asked would say we have no fault to find with the master and if he could fetch his wine from the cellar we might every one of us have grown gray in his house the stable boy found this curious that not a single person would stay in the McCarthy's employ and looks for an opportunity to enter the house he presented himself and offered to be the butler and McCarthy McCarthy agrees to give him like a trial run Mm -hmm. McCarthy Decides to have a hunting friend for dinner, um, like, over to his house, and they would consume yeah. dinner together. Um, I, I, you see, I was assuming that they were going to eat the hunting friend. Yeah, that's why I clarified, yeah. Okay. Good, and good. Uh, Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. It's important because I am so detached from reality right now. <laughs> and he rings the bell three times, which was his signal for more wine. The stable okay. boy goes into the cellar, which is described as a vault containing more ice than he has ever seen. This is a uh, pre refrigeration. So I suspect that this is an effort to show how wealthy the stable boys employer is. And, I mean, and if you yeah. have ice in a basement, like a cellar, yeah, it'll set, it'll stick around longer. Yeah. As long as you maintain the ice. Uh, uh-huh. so once he has descended deep into the vault, the boy hears laughing and sees an empty bottle in the lantern light. The bottles begin to vibrate violently like the glass from Jurassic Park. One thing leads to another, and it turns out the creature in the cellar is a chloricon called Mr. Nagin. Nag- N- Naginin. Uh, Naginin. Seems Naginin. Right to me. Who only allows Mr. McCarthy to get wine from the cellar because he only respects him due to its good quality. What? Yeah, so it's a very long story, but the short version is... None of the butlers could keep a job because the Chloricon would, like, just scare everyone away except for the owner of the wine because the wine was so good. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I think we already touched on this. Uh, the next line I wrote that I think the yeah. Chloricon would be a good idea for a and d class. That, that it would be or at the very fun. least a race. Yeah, yeah. Although I kind of feel like... Um... Feel like Charlie was a Chloricon. Charlie could be a Chloricon. Yeah, that was a fun. That was a fun uh, character. It was a very that... fun, fun character. <laughs> so, because everyone loves listening to people talking about their D and D stories, uh, when uh, when I was running a campaign a while back, uh, we we, were, we started in Pathfinder, eventually moved to Five E. Um, but the long and short of it is I had created this city. I had like, I know who yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. So I made the city and I had set up this like whole thing where it was going to be like a double cross, yada, yada, yada. So I made a, uh, 
they, they they went to the bar. Brandon and several other people went to the bar. And honestly, I didn't have any plan for what was going to be in the bar. So they asked me if anyone was sitting around the, the room. And I'm like, yeah, sure. There's like a halfling in the corner. I think he was a gnome. Was he a gnome? He Charlie, was a gnome. Charlie was, he a, was gnome. a gnome. He was a gnome. He was a gnome. Um, so they became obsessed with Charlie. <laughs> That's every DM's favorite thing. Yep. The entire group becomes obsessed with a throwaway NPC. Yep, I threw him together in like three seconds and named him Charlie. And I played him like Charlie from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Uh-huh. Because, you know, when you're coming up with a character on the fly, it's usually easiest to pick a character that already exists. But I, I dialed up the crazy factor, like, 100%. Yeah. Um, and in the middle of the night, Charlie burst through a wall and attacked Brandon's character. <laughs> Brandon then proceeded to spend the remainder of the campaign making a knife for him and making his life better. Yeah, it was so good. The, uh... The, uh... Oh, the, damn it. The, uh, 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 uh so it's Charlie... Right, so he attacked me, but then I like sort of got him to stick with the group and befriend him for a little bit, and in, and I'd put instead of like whenever I got gold or shit like that, I would put it towards decking out Charlie, and then something happened. I think you pro- in real life it was probably you got tired of dealing with Charlie, and uh, he disappeared, and then he came back, and um, he's like riding a rat. <laughs> and it was fantastic to see this NPC who we all loved and then went away, come back and like save us from a Bigfoot, I think. I think it was saving you from a Bigfoot. But the, the long and short of it was I stopped doing the campaign because I had to go back to school. Uh, and then yeah. we came back and I restarted the campaign and Charlie was born, reborn in that. Also, another throwaway character was the... Uh, uh, was the ended up becoming the big bad so that happened too which there's a story behind that but i'm not gonna go into it yeah uh for for those who read our copies i also just inserted uh a link to how to make fight milk from which is awful it's always sunny (laughs) i watched a little bit of it and it it there's an implication that the man is drinking (laughs) antifreeze So, yeah. Well, he starts with Riot Juice, and then he switches over to Fight Milk, which, oh. from his reaction, seems pretty good. It's almost like eggnog. Um, he didn't use real crow eggs. Uh, okay, he well, get then it's not. Well, if he didn't use real crow eggs, then it's not Fight Milk. <laughs> it's Ike. Ka! Ka! You need the cause. You need the cause. In a poem entitled, The Leprechaun, or fairy shoemaker and the 18th century irish poet william allingham uh, describes the appearance of a leprechaun as a wrinkled wizened and bearded elf spectacles stuck on his pointed nose silver buckles on his shoes and a leather apron upon his lap the modern image of a leprechaun sitting on a toad sco- toads oh god why is it that i can say these weird names but i you can't always- say Oh, shit, you literally, man. you literally only screw up normal when words. you're on normal <laughs> words. Literally only on normal words. Every other word, you're fine. Normal words, I don't know what it is. I don't know. The modern image of a leprechaun sitting on a toadstool, having a red beard and green hat, is clearly more. Uh, a modern invention or borrowed image from other strands of European folklore. Um, Everyone knows of the various leprechauns from pop culture. While diverging almost completely from the traditional leprechaun, one stands above them all. The Mm -hmm. Leprechaun movie series. They're amazing. I saw Leprechaun 1 on TV when I was probably way too young to be watching it. It was released in 1993, and when uh which is when I was two, and I watched it tenuously in my room when it aired on the sci fi channel. Uh a true horror movie, uh when I was told I was too young to watch them and it was mm-hmm. very scary. Um, yeah. It also featured a young uh young Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Pre friends. Uh, I watched a few clips uh for from that for this podcast and I don't think that uh 
if I had the nostalgia that uh, it would have held up as well, but I thought they were great. Uh, yeah, I, it it definitely it definitely does not. Yeah. Hold up. <laughs> oh God. So <laughs> yeah. I I just looked this up. Uh-huh. Um, Leprechaun is the second movie that Jennifer Aniston appeared in. No shit. Okay, what's the first? Do you want to know what the first is? Yes. You're you're never gonna guess it. It was oh god okay let me guess. Uh, uh, wait, let me give you a hint. It was featured on the Return of Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Oh no. Oh no, this isn't the the wilderness one. No, is it? the the super racist wilderness one. No, it's not that. Okay, this isn't. I mean, they, they had a lot of movies. In you're not talking about The Gauntlet. You're talking about Series 1. Series 1. Wait. It might have been in The Gauntlet. I only got halfway through The Gauntlet. I only got halfway through. Those were some... it, it's a true gauntlet. It is really, really a true gauntlet. So uh, I know for a fact. I'm, I don't want to say I know for a fact. My guess is it is not the giant fighting robots one because that's far too modern. No, that's far too modern. Is it the first one? I can't. I don't I, remember what it's called. I believe it was the first one. It was Mac and Me. It was. She was in Mac and Me. That was she the first was one. Uncredited in Mac and Me as a no. dancer in McDonald's. She was in the McDonald's scene. She was a dancer in Holy the McDonald's shit. scene. Shit. For those, I just hit the mic. I apologize. The for anyone who's not seen Mac and Me, one go do it. But it also well, has... wait, 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 wait. If you're going to watch it, watch it in the Mystery Science Theater 3000 version. Because True. I, I cannot advocate watching that movie without someone ripping it. Or yeah. you have to be watching it with other people and ripping it. Because otherwise, you will literally go insane watching that movie. I watched Mac and Me alone, the original version. Not Mystery Science Theater 3000 before I saw it. But, so if you have Netflix, go to MST3K. Uh, I think season two is titled The Gauntlet, which is six movies back to back to back to back to back to back. And <laughs> just watch it there. It's it's fantastic. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's so bad. It is like it earned it got that. It came by that zero on Rotten Tomatoes. Honest. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Is this pre or post E.T.? Uh, post E.T. because it's 88. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's guys. Holy shit. Watch Mac and me. Watch it. It's just watch it. There's no there's literally no word that could explain it. Actually, wait, no, there is. Yeah. It was made by McDonald's. Was it for real? Yes. Cause there McDonald's is... McDonald's like had a major like role in the creation of that movie, if my memory is correct. Well, it's – so there's a shameless scene where for no reason people go to McDonald's and for about five minutes – that might be an exaggeration – for at least two minutes, yeah. There, there's uh, a dance party in McDonald's. And it's 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 like it, – it's not like in, in today's movies where, like, they'll drive a cool car and then it's a Nissan and, and you see the car for a few seconds. It's like – <laughs> like McDonald's had a huge scene in this movie. Oh yeah, it was it was bonkers. Supposedly there's no guarantee that there was funding from McDonald's. There's some reports that there are, but the director denies it. However, however, I would argue that based on the McDonald's scene, he did receive funding from Golden State Foods which is a f- food service distributor closely associated with McDonald's. Oh, uh, So, okay. yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. Ronald McDonald appeared in the theatrical trailer, so we'll assume they at least approved of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So I, t- I told you that first part about me watching Leprechaun 1 yeah, when yeah, I was yeah. too young. To tell you this, um, and I will be adding a uh, post-outro excerpt from Leprechaun into Hood. The fifth installment of the Lep series, mm-hmm. and which diverged from the horror uh, genre to horror comedy. Strong yep. work, Davis, as the Leprechaun, Ice-T, Red Grant, and Jackie D. Red Grant, by the way, I love in 
a bunch of different things, and he was just on uh, Something's Burning, the All Things Comedy uh, cooking mm-hmm. show, which is fantastic, the the Super Bowl series. No, it's pretty great. Um, he, I don't think it was him, it was the other guy, but he did, uh, that's, I, I make men hot sauce now by adding butter and maple syrup into a pan, melting it down, and adding Frank's Red Hot and putting on everything, because it's fantastic. Um, uh, <sighs> but anyway, the death count... Uh, there's a death every 9.1 minutes during the 90-minute flick. The movie has a kill count of 10 and is a true masterpiece of cinema. It was also made to film a single scene. <laughs> was it? It well, opens... W- the first scene of Leprechaun in the Hood is from Leprechaun 2, but they changed the voiceover. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> we watched this together. Yes. Yeah. This was back in the days when I think I think I had just gotten Netflix. Is this is when we watched this? It's like you early came, Netflix. Yeah. yeah, you came over. I'm like, I found this movie. Let's watch this in the living room of my parents' house. <laughs> so I put it on. We then proceeded uh-huh. to watch the entire movie. There's a scene where they op- they filmed two people walking for too long, so they did a cross fade, and the people jumped forward like. 50 feet because they it took too long which considering the fact considering the fact that this is a 90 minute movie like they didn't need to cut that out so but the ending scene if you watch nothing else just watch the ending scene of that movie it's it's so good also i want to point out um because this is the fifth movie in the the Leprechaun series, uh, he had already been to space and back by this point. Yeah, I think I, I might have been wrong in my previous statement. I think it was actually the same first shot as Leprechaun in space with a different voiceover. Uh, okay, and then it goes into the. Pit. I don't even want to describe the movie. It's just it, it, you have to watch it. <clears throat> but it's too good. <laughs> it should be noted. It should be noted uh-huh. uh, that. The next movie is Leprechaun Back to the Hood. It's not Back to the Hood? The. T-H-A. The. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Um, And then the, the series got rebooted. And guess what? It the wasn't Warwick Swoggle? Davis. It was not Warwick Davis playing the Leprechaun. Was it the Hornswoggle playing the Leprechaun? The Hornswoggle plays the Leprechaun. Oh, shit. Full circle. Oh, damn. See, my problem is I love Warwick Davis as an actor and i understand why he stopped doing the leprechaun series but i think he improved it but i do appreciate him uh having the backbone because warwick davis does a lot for uh for little people rights in the film industry yeah um and he started in well he was great in life's too short um, and then he also did a, a television series where it was, ba- Warwick Davis just, he's just a good guy. <laughs> yeah, he, no, he's a really good guy. Yeah. I, I legitimately like him. I yeah. like the advocacy he does. Yeah, no, um, his push also, is to put little people in, like, real well, acting role. Like, they yeah. are actors, they real, give them real acting roles. Um, yeah. don't like in Willy Wonka, give a not little person, a little person role. Like he, I don't know. Yeah. He's just like, a cool don't, guy. Yeah, if you're going, yeah, it's there's a lot of stuff. So what's this picture that you, this is from Lord of the Rings? No, that's the the leprechaun from Leprechaun Origins. No shit, it looks that's like Gollum. F- fucking terrifying. It looks it looks like the orcs from Lord of the. You know what it looks like? It looks like a Falmer. Yes, it does look like a Falmer. So for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, or will, if you've ever played Elder Scrolls. The the Falmer are those those like demons that live underground, the like weird fast guys that are blind but can shoot arrows real good. Mm-hmm. Those are the Falmer, which by the way, fun fact, those are snow elves. Yes, they're the fallen snow elves. Yeah, well they, they went underground and then just over a long period of time they didn't need their eyes because they were underground for so uh it's a whole thing. I like Elder Scrolls lore. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we'll leave it there. Yeah, we'll just leave it. So, uh, as always, 
<laughs> if you want to get in contact with us, we've got a website, CryptopediaCast.com, which has all these links. Um, our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. The Twitter is also at CryptopediaCast. Not going to mention SoundCloud. Uh, if you want to email us, email at CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. Uh, I do believe that it is time to thank our jackalopes. Let me ah. do a quick check to verify that we don't have any new ones. Because otherwise, I know this is going to be a one-person long shot. <laughs> and let's see. Relationship manager. Who does the Saturday Night Live voiceover? I feel like I should throw him a few bucks and get him to say the names. I have no idea, but I don't think we're going to be able to afford them. Um. Okay, yeah. So we only have the one, one jackalope still. So thanks again, Clay. Clay uh, Sinclair. He's been... Word of mouth in the podcast pretty good, and we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, if you're interested in the podcast and you want to talk to other people who are interested in the podcast or talk to us, you can always go to the Facebook group. Uh, we do post some stuff there periodically. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing I use Facebook for anymore. Yeah. Uh, if you like the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that stuff that you hear everyone say and you ignore. Uh <laughs> <laughs> if you have any monster ideas or stories that you want us to say, let us know. Um, I do have like a lot of ideas, but sometimes finding sources is difficult. So maybe yeah. I can amend that. If you find interesting sources about monsters, uh, send us those because I have literally nine ideas I'm currently working on. But the main problem is finding good sources. So there's that. Uh, if you have any creepypasta or cryptopasta, I probably won't read it. <laughs> uh, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon, capital C, capital B. Jeez, oh, the, the sleepies always come during these. Uh if you want to get in contact with me, uh, I'm on Instagram at mu2057. There have been a lot of cat pictures lately, people. I'm a lot sorry. Of cat pictures. A lot of cat pictures. There's been some pictures of a, a aquarium. My car's flat tires there, which we didn't talk about, but I don't really want to talk about because the balloon's still too fresh. Uh, <laughs> if you want to get in contact with me on Twitter, it's at JF Dunham. My website is still functioning, johndunhamgames.com. And if you want to email me, john at cryptopediacast.com, or there's links on my website. Have you done anything? So you mentioned an idea, like a concept for a game to me. Oh, uh, ha- yeah. Have you started uh, uh, so like out, like a, an initial outline of how you'd want? Because that seems super cool. Um, I've started the planning process for it. Okay. But um, I also started exploring different engines that I want to use and frameworks. But uh-huh. I then hit a like a roadblock. Let's say let's say I hit a mental roadblock that I'm currently getting past. Okay. And we'll leave it at that for the podcast. Uh, uh but I once I get progress on that, my plan is to add early playable demos of it to the Jackalope rewards. That's um, pretty awesome. That's my current plan for it. Uh and basically what I'll do is as I make progress on the basically alpha builds, um, when I hit stable points, maybe I'll release versions of it to the public. We'll see. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to make too many promises because I have no idea if I'm ever going to find the time to really work on it. But I've got some ideas. I don't even remember what the initial idea I pitched to you was. Oh, wait. Now I do. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's an oh. RPG. Yeah, uh, it, it sounds pretty cool. As time permits, just whittle, whittle away. I had to explain what whittling was to someone, by the way, the other day. You had to explain what whittling was? Yeah, I said said that. To, I, made, I made a joke because he was talking about trying to do stuff with his, with his kid. And I, I made a joke about whittling because then you give a little kid a knife. And, he, and I was like, oh, you should just teach her how to whittle. And he was like, huh? And I was like, whittle. And he, go, he said, what did you say? And I said, whittle. 
<laughs> he goes, what? I said, well, you carve stuff with a knife out of wood. He's like, I don't do woodworking like you do. <laughs> I was like, well, hold up, man. But it's <laughs> this not isn't, even. This isn't that. You're making a stick into a duck. <laughs> well, but. <sighs> what? Uh, I, I just thought I, it was I just... something that everyone knew. It, it, it was yeah, weird. I, I guess I just live in a world where whittling is normal. Yeah. Have you ever, do you ever think about how many things that you just accept as normal that are probably extremely bizarre? No, I don't until someone goes, what's that? And you're like, wait a minute, you've never, you don't know about this? Yeah. Oh, it's weird. Hey, long story short, if you're going to whittle, make sure that you uh, keep your knife sharp. Because a sharp knife is way better than a, than a dull knife when it comes to screwing up. Yeah, keep your knife sharp. Always cut away from you. Well, in whittling, there is pull. There is a pull mechanism where you take your hand and then you like do like a parring motion. Well, yeah, but you do it so you're not going to cut the tip of your thumb off. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. Yeah. But but there is a there is a very particular stroke that you do with the knife for that. But you yeah. don't do broad strokes with it. You literally just do very incremental paring. Yeah. You know? And you use a different knife. Yeah. <laughs> so, regardless. Yep. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. Wow. I'm going to go, like, think about the Hornswoggle a little bit more. I think you should. Yeah. Uh, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And uh, things are gonna get weird